Hello, my name is Jared Fortney and I'm a Group Networks Consultant. Today we're going to do a lesson on P6 data and how to begin to build it. We're going to discuss uh, firstly the admin preferences and then secondly we're going to cover the admin categories and thirdly we're going to go over the currencies uh, that you can utilize in Primavera P6. So, <clears throat> go ahead and show you here where the the admin area is. It's uh, right up here on the toolbar, next to Tools, between uh, Tools and Help. And if you go to the admin preferences, you'll see all of the choices that you'll have uh, if you have administrative rights in the software. Um, these preferences will not be available to you if you're a regular user. Um, we'll cover that later on when we discuss uh, user profiles. But um, the first tab here within the admin preferences is the general tab. And um, <clears throat> the first the per first preference that you're able to sit, set is the code separator. Now this code separator is just a, a symbol that you'll use. I think almost everyone uses a, a dot or a period. Um, maybe some people use a dash. But this is going to be the symbol that separates any kind of code that's, been con that's being concatenated. And um, <clears throat> You'll see that when you're setting uh, project codes or user codes, if you want to kind of make a secondary level of hierarchy by, you know, creating maybe two letters like ph dot o one dot b lowercase b, you could, you know, come up with any any kind of uh, combination of of characters there. But this code separator is what will separate those, as well as the WBS. Um, you also set the start starting day of the week. If your company is a construction company and their fiscal week is Saturday to to Friday or you know Monday to Sunday, you'll be able to set the first day of your week here. It's in this area. The acti activity duration default. So when you create a new activity, it will be uh, currently it would be one day just by default. Um, the other area here is a password policy. Now, <clears throat> some software allows you to set, you know, um, I know that Contract Manager does, allows you to set different levels of, of the password policy, like does it require a character, does it require a number, does the first, does the first character have to be a letter, you know, you can you can change this. Uh, in P6, it's real simple. It's you either enable this password policy or you, or you don't use it, um, and it basically just requires that the password is at least eight characters and has one number and one letter, which is pretty good. But um, it's kind of binary. It's either off or on. Um, the next area we have here is timesheets. Now, timesheets is a function that you know I, I don't, in my experience, don't think that a lot of people use, but you know, you'll see the general setting settings for timesheets here. Um, if a resource can assign themselves to activities by default, you can enable the timesheet auditing. You can uh, have new resources use timesheets by default. This is the timesheet approval level. So this basically would go to the OBS and determine, you know, how many people need to approve the timesheet within Primavera. And this would be the default resource manager and also another uh, OBS area here where you would choose a particular person to do the approval on timesheets. Now, um, <clears throat> the data limits here. So what this is kind of doing is, is allowing you to restrict how detailed or also not just detail but also how much information you can store in the database so from an IT standpoint you know this could be important but you know I'll show you how this works you'll see that this is the WBS that we're in 
So we have a project open. This is its WBS, and you can see a first level hierarchy, a second level, and a third level here. And you'll see that this arrow here, which would allow you to outdent this level to, to a, a lower level of hierarchy and the WBS, you can see that it's grayed out. So we'll go here to back to the admin preferences and you'll see that the number here is three. So that is the maximum amount of tree levels that you can have within your WBS currently. So you'll see layer one, layer two, and layer three here. Now if I change this to four and we click close, we should be able to click on, the, on a similar level here and now you'll see that this arrow will allow you to outdent um, this part of the WBS out to a, a, a fourth level, a, a lower, another lower level of hierarchy. <clears throat> right, so we'll go back here to the preferences and basically this works in the exact same way for all of this, for the OBS, for the resources, for cost accounts, for the activity codes, everything you see here will work in that same way. Um, except for the stuff that's under this this line right here. You'll see this literally just says how many activity codes you can have per project, the num maximum number of baselines that you can have associated with a project, the uh, maximum baselines copied with a project, meaning when you copy it, how many uh, of the baselines are you able to export with it. So this is a this is a an administrator preference area that's kind of important to the IT because it really kind of limits the size of the database. Now these ID links are similar. Um, they specify the, the maximum number of characters that you're allowed to have um, at each level. So if you're going to name this project, what we'll do is jump back into projects here, <clears throat> and you'll see here that this is the project ID and this is the project description or project name. And we come back here, uh, admin preferences. So this ID, Harbor Point, would be limited to 20. If you hit 21 characters, it would stop you. Um, this is a WVS code, maximum characters, resource IDs, activity IDs, cost IDs, role IDs. They're all similar here, but basically what it's doing is setting that unique identifier's uh, length within uh, Primavera. Time periods, uh, this is important. I think almost everyone uses uh, this checkbox, which is to assign the calendar, uh, or for P6 to utilize the calendar that you've assigned to the activity, um, because different activities can have different periods in which uh, you're able to work that activity different crews, different, you know, times of availability, all kinds of different things, but normally the calendars applied are are, are used, but if you don't want to use this, you can go ahead and, and change these uh, to 10 hours a day, and if you worked seven days a week, you would have 70, and on and on you do, you know, 70 hours times, you know, the number of, the number of months, and uh, so on and so forth, and this would extrapolate out to hours per year. Um, here you'll see abbreviations for time periods. Now when you put a duration in to a project, you'll, uh, you'll very often see, um, especially depending on what kind of calendar or what, what kind of time uh, scale you're using. If you're using minutes, if you're scheduling something down to the minute, which is, you know, or to the hour, to the day, you know, I think most projects you'll utilize a duration of one day. This is, this particular project has days. This is an 82 day project. Um, but it is possible to use minutes, hours, all of that stuff. So from the admin preferences, you'd want to set the abbreviation that would go behind this, this number. Um, you'll see that minutes is N because months is more common, uh, a more common duration than minutes, so they choose the N. Everything else is pretty straightforward, hours, days, weeks, months, years. This is where you'll have all your earned value calculations and all the specific settings. Um, earned value is very important in project management. 
So these preferences are something that you would want to study. You know, I'm not going to discuss earn value or any of the project management uh, terminologies here, ETC or you know PF, any of that stuff. Um, but this, if you're really, really interested in the, your earn value calculations, this is the area as an administrator to come in and uh, change that. This has to do with reporting. Basically, it allows you to determine the um, header, footer, and uh, and a custom label for your reports. These options um, said the uh, allow the use of the project architect. We discussed that in a previous lesson. It has to do with uh, basically a wizard that allows you to create a new project. This would be for P6 Web. You would plug in the server, the P6 Web server's URL, so that P6 can connect. Because all administration, even for P6 Web, is done through this uh, client server application, not through a P6 Web uh, web page. Okay. Um, this workflow administrator would be a user within P6 that you would designate to do. Uh, basically to determine all the workflows within the, the ap application. Then you have um, and you're able to enable a link to contract manager which is another Oracle Primavera software that's uh, specific to project management. And these are rate types. It would be able to come in and determine uh, a role and then determine their uh, price per unit things of that nature. And the second thing that we're going to discuss is admin categories. This is where you really start to get the uh, customization in, in Primavera. Here you're able to determine baseline types. Uh, we could create a brand new one that was uh, original. Original baseline. So now when you go to add a baseline to a project, you can go to manage baselines and now that option would be there I gotta remember main, maintain baselines and when you added one you would have the option of choosing a type and baseline type would be here and now you'll see original baseline um, So very much like this, the other ones, expense categories, this is a, a place that you can basically create buckets, accounting buckets. So you say, you know, we have expenses for travel, training, software, shipping, materials, facilities, you know, things of that nature. You can, you can add a new bucket here and we'll just say food or, you know, maybe this is for lunch, lunches or breakfast or coffee. Um, same deal here, project phase. Um, once again, not going to discuss project management um, terminologies, but uh, a phase, if you wanted to if you wanted to group your activities in your project within a specific phase and it wasn't here uh, and available, you would be able to add one. Um, all of the documents that you attach to a project, project charter, project scope, um, spreadsheets, bid documents, anything that you're doing, you could have RFIs. So we would put a new one here. We'd say, you know, RFIs. Now, when we add a document to our schedule, we would we would put it in the RFI section. Remember, this is all uh, ad administrative preferences, so this stuff will not come uh, automatically when you open Primavera. You would have to either have admin rights or speak to your administrator. Um, document status, once again, you wanted to add this, you know, you got completed in progress, not started, on hold, uh, let's say deferred, you know, uh, you could set the status of the project or uh, of, of the actual documents that you have attached to your project. Once again, this is another kind of uh, accounting bucket you want to associate some time or you know some uh, some overhead with a specific bucket then you would be able to come in here and say you know <clears throat> say DIF or death 
and family. So now we have a place to put all that time. You can determine the risk types. Once again, totally modifiable. You can put whatever you like in there. Notebook topics. You can not only add them or but you can also go and determine what, at what level you can add each one of these. So at the EPS level, at the project level, at the WBS level, at the activity level, and you can see uh, that goes all the way down. So five different levels of scope here with regard to uh, these notebook topics. And then um, <clears throat> we have units of measure. This will allow you to create custom units of measure let's say that we want one uh, that's going to that's going to have to do with time let's say light years so we'll put ly here we'll put in light years now we'll have a brand new unit of measure you know this goes uh, with this this will go when you're progressing a schedule if you're going to use uh, uh, the percent complete type you know units percent complete if you have a hundred gizmos to build and you've built fifty of the gizmos then you know you can make a unit of measure here which is gizmos okay so we've covered that now, lastly we're going to cover currencies now currency is a little weird uh, I would like to see them change this I think the interface is a little uh, it's a little misleading. It makes you think that you can just choose one of these. Like I can make the British pound the uh, the base currency, but you can't ever change this. <laughs> so this checkbox is not is not changeable. You can't check it or uncheck it, and you can't check anything else. But what you can do, if you'd like to change the base currency, you can see that this project. The scope for this actually doesn't have to do with projects. It has to do with the entire software. So if you were to change the base currency for here, it would it would be throughout all projects. But you'll see here that the that the uh, actual labor costs are all in dollars. So what they say in the help section here, you can check out yourself. Is the way to change this? So let's say that we'd like to track this in um, Chinese yuan. So we'll say CNY <laughs> and uh, we'll change this to Chinese Yuan and it'll if it's not unique it will basically just give you a new one and we'll change the symbol here to Y for Yuan okay so now when we close this you'll see that the currency has changed to Chinese Yuan and um, so if we were to go back and make this US dollars again and we'll change the symbol to dollars hit close it'll go back so now we have um, we have uh, the dollar sign here and you'll see that all the rates have changed. So <clears throat> this has been um, a tutorial for group networks and we discussed admin preferences, admin categories, and currencies. Once again I'm Jared Fortney and I'll see you next lesson.